Chris can start and set up Lou. Is Good evening, it is 7.05 and I am resuming the regular business meeting of the New Market School Board. Tonight our meeting started at 6. Um, we had a student recognition for Michaela Hartman who received an award from the um, <coughs> NCWIT and then we had a presentation from our supermar supermarket superintendent search firm, NESDEC. Um, now I will open the floor to public comment. We don't have a lot of guests here this evening. So I will close public comment, and with the board's permission, uh, we'll move into uh, the agenda, but I'd like to modify. We have Chris Cooney here from the um, uh, IT department of the schools to talk about uh, the district and school websites. So I'd like for him to do that now, if that's all right with you guys. Chris, please, please proceed. Okay. Jason is also here. Jason Carey, the IT director. And Chris, I think this you're... This is Nadal. So. Oh. <laughs> just in case, you know, just pay no attention. <laughs> All right. Hi. So we talked um, earlier 
Talk to us earlier um, about the need for a new website. The, the current website for the school has served its purpose and still does, it's still pretty good, but it's no longer ADA compliant. Um, so we were confronted with the struggle of, okay, we need to either make our current site ADA compliant or we need to move on to a new platform. Did some research, found that there was no way to make the existing platform ADA compliant, and plus there was a desire to move on to a more professional looking website. Our contemporaries in the region all have nicer looking websites. Some of them, like Epping, for example, using sites like Campus Suite, which is what we ended up going with. So this is a, a new solution. Um, it's hosted and supported by this company, Campus Suite, um, which is much different than how our present solution is, which is through Google Sites, which is not supported really through Google. You can call them, but good luck getting them to fix anything. And it's um, something that we kind of manage completely in-house. This is more of a collaborative effort where a lot of the heavy lifting in terms of um, the design and the, the overall look and feel of it is based off of architecture created by Campus Suite. We manage the content. Um, and by we, I mean me. So I've been working for a few months now to get this up and running. We're pretty close. Um, I want to say we're probably about 80% way done in terms of being ready to launch. Um, the site is live, technically. You can, you and anyone else can go to it. It's at staging.newmarket.k12.nh.us. Um, if you go there, you'll be taken straight to the site as it is. Um, it's navigable, it's got some content on it, some that I added today. For example, this um, upfront picture here with a, of the school, I just happen to have this. Um, I'm gonna try to get some higher def pictures and things like that. I think I might have to end up taking them myself. Um, but we're gonna build a nice little gallery of pictures to make it look nice and vibrant. As you can already tell, I mean, the front page of the site, it's much more colorful. Yeah. Um, it has a much more modern style to it. It's minimalist, all the important things jump out. Like if you go over here to schools, it pops out with two pictures of the, of the schools. It's very nice. So um, we've, I figured it was a good time to stop by and sort of announce that the site's pretty much ready to go. The way we're gonna handle the deployment is at a designated time, we're gonna work with the NHGOIT to update our URLs so that they will go to the new site instead of the old site. The old site will still exist. We're going to give it a new URL that we're going to hide just for internal purposes only. It's not intended for public consumption because it is ADA non-compliant, um, so it can't really be used legally, but we can still use it in-house as like an information resource and to go back and get archived data that we still need. So it's still gonna be there. Um, the new site, um, will have all of its URLs changed from the old site. So nes.newmarket, njshs.newmarket, just the regular www.newmarket, we'll all go back to the <coughs> site and we'll go back to the appropriate site. So nes.newmarket will go to the NES page. And as you, hold on, let me see. Where am I looking at that one? I'm so at this one. Um, you, when you go to the elementary school, you'll notice that it kind of nice. looks very similar. And this, by the way, this thing not loading is a bug. Working on getting fixed. So there we go. All right. So as you can see, it, it's got the same exact sort of structure, look and feel and theme, but the content is going to be different. So both sites for the schools and the sites for the SAU are going to look different and have different content, but the structure is going to be the same. So users who move from site to site are going to remain familiar with how it's built and how it's navigated, which should make things a lot easier because the way we have it now, it does look very similar, but those are all completely separate sites that can be modified independent of each other with this. If I update any part of this theme, it pushes down to the entire rest of the site. It just makes it a lot slicker and cleaner. So um, are there, first off, just before we get into any details that might be interesting, are there any questions about the site? Um, first, I want to say how amazing it looks. It's a whole, it, you've taken us to a whole different stratosphere of technology, so thank you for that. Wish I could take full credit, but this, a lot of this was Campus Suites work. Well, they do I'm going to give the recognition to you. Um, my next question is, in terms of ADA features, mm -hmm. can you show us some of those things? Like things that magnify, or is that not, am I asking something that's not? Okay, so. Um, a lot of the ADA compliance is sort of, it doesn't play super well to a crowd because a lot of it is baked into the architecture of the uh, site. Okay. So people with visual impairments, the way they access websites is they use screen reader programs that basically read the website to them. Okay. Those programs read the website's code to 
to do that. Okay. And the website has to be coded specifically to kind of cater to those or make itself available to those. Also, there's smaller things like um, the way the, the, the font choices and text colors and things like that are engineered specifically to work with people who can't see things based off of what kind of contrast, hmm. people with color blindness, stuff like that. Um, it's, so there's subtle aspects to it there. Okay. Um, there's also architecture built in for things like images. So for example, this image here, if a screen reader program, while it's reading the website, gets to this, it'll read the alt text of this image, which I have typed into say, school lunch on table napkin or whatever. Oh, right? neat. Okay. So it's a lot of it is built into the architecture. Now in terms of zoom options, things like that, not available yet. But we did check, or at least I checked with as much as I could, and those aren't necessarily hard and fast. Okay. You really get dinged on those too much. What what really gets you in ADA is alt text for images, because some I'm sure you've seen pictures of of prose or, or, or text. So like for example, the special ed department has a picture that's a poem. Right. Right. Well, if if you're re if you're using screen reader, you'll get to say picture here, and that'll be it. So you actually have to write the entire text and stuff like that. So that's stuff we weren't doing now. We are. Um, there's also uh, features in for videos and things like that, where videos have to be narrated if um, if it's not spoken word or closed captioned. Um, it, there's a lot, yeah. There, there's a lot that people don't usually think about, or we haven't been thinking about. Right. But now we have to. That's great. Um, so having this solution is going to make it a lot easier to manage that to keep us safe from litigation. Um, and allow people to access the website that might need to. Yes, uh, it's much more accessible. I mean, we in our previous site, we did have an accessibility uh, form that people could fill out if they were running into any trouble. We did get a few um, responses. We get a lot of spam, but we did get a few responses from people who said they were having accessibility issues. Hopefully, the new site will help with that a little bit. Sure. Also, it the this site is um, built into the architecture of the site. This is another reason why you go with a hosted solution instead of one that, it, uh, one that you pay for versus one that you don't is it's set up so that it, it reads well on mobile. So if you are looking okay. at it on a pad or a phone, it automatically resizes itself and makes it accessible on mobile. Nice. Great. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of good stuff going on. Um, so I wanted to make the announcement and say it's pretty much ready to go. Um, I'm, I wanted to sort of get the okay uh, from the board before I start talking to the DOIT to start putting into motion, updating the URLs, and then we'll just go live with it. So overnight, people's URL, when they click on their bookmark to go, because I know everyone's got a bookmark, when they click on their bookmark to go to the site to check in the morning, um, they'll go to this instead okay. of the old one. What's the uh, DDOIT? So just to be clear, the DOIT is the Department of Information Technology. New Hampshire Department of Information Technology. They own uh, newmarket.info. Yeah. Which is so we have to go through them if we want to update the addressing and things like that. Our, our emails, for example, you know, that's the URL is through them. Chris, I know um, we say this to Jason a lot, but we are and you are not here as often, so I just want to thank you for all the work that you guys do um, to keep us moving in the IT department throughout the whole district. We appreciate all the hard work that both of you do. Yeah. And um, thank you. it means a lot. Um, packaged in with this, by the way, do you, do you want me to talk about the alert system? Is it sort of yes. Yeah. Okay. So packaged in with this. So um, this isn't just a website. Um, Canvas Suite is sort of a full content management system, and we also invested in their alert system. So right now we're using Blackboard Connect for our right. alerts. That's um, for when you get text messages and robocalls. And will through this window. And will through this window. This is not something that we're, I mean, once <laughs> this goes live and we can finally say, okay, this is pretty much now in maintenance mode, then we move on to getting the alerts up. We, um, but it's that's next on the pro project list. But it comes packaged with an alert system that's fully realized, so we're going to move out of just Blackboard Connect and start adopting Campus Suite. The advantage to that is because the alert system and the website are both managed by the same company, um, it's baked into the code. So if we do an alert, for example, hey, there's a school closing, all the person needs to do is activate the alert, the texts go out, the phones go up, and the website updates hmm. automatically. It'll just, and it'll have a pop-up. It'll go to the website, and it'll pop up. It'll say, school's closed. Click here for more details, and it'll direct you to the page that we have set up for school closings and delays. So it's uh, it's sort of an all-in-one system, and the the price point rounded out to we're we're not spending any extra money. So we're getting a website, we're keeping an alert system for no extra cost. Okay. There's about half of what we were paying for Blackboard Connect. Oh great! So we could save. Yes. Yeah, it's it's a great system, and just having worked with them, this company for years, um, 
or two years, ah, months. Um, <laughs> they have a really good support team. Um, I was here the day after Christmas working on the site, and I had a small problem, so they've got a little chat bot that you can click, and it came up, and I just sent a message expecting nothing to come back, like, I get back to you immediately. So they're attentive and very professional, and like, nothing but good things to say about them so far. Um, I have sent an email. I think it was just to you. It was, and I'm really realizing right now that I never passed it along to anyone and didn't fulfill it. <laughs> so, yes, you did, Chris. You guys are going to have a page. Mm -hmm. um, at the moment, the school board page is... Thrifty. Uh, it is a single low image, low resolution picture about gay baby where you can't make out any faces. And it just says the school board is awesome and you know really strives for education excellence. And that's about it. Um, what I would love to have is sort of profiles for every person in the school board and contact details for anybody who wants that information public. Um, paragraph it doesn't have to be very much. It's all going to be in one single page. Also, any. Um, action items that the school board is interested in or committed to that it wants to be able to communicate to the public. You, you guys can have as, as vibrant a page as you want. It's easy to set up, and uh, if you, you, and if you all have New Market email accounts, so I can get you set up with logins, and if you want to edit the site yourself. So that's definitely a conversation I want to have. It's not necessarily, it wasn't on the uh, critical path to use corporate speak. Um, Good thing, because I dropped the ball on the critical path. <laughs> it wasn't on the critical path, so I sort, of, I sort of just let it go. But once we go live and then we start moving into sort of maintenance mode, it's definitely going to be something we can come back to and say, like, hey, let's get to work on it. Maybe we could do it during a retreat. We could have you show up, and we could just, like, tell you what we want and do pictures and do that kind of thing. I'm happy to. I mean, yeah, my uh, my my title is website manager. <laughs> Webmaster. Webmaster. Different, but website manager. And I'm happy to take on 100% responsibility. I'm happy also to delegate to other people as well, but it's 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 up it's up to really how much you want to be involved in it. If you would really prefer just to send me the content, I post it. It's fine. Perfect. Yeah, it works for me. Any other questions for Chris? No, thank you. It's great. Okay. Yeah. So, Thanks. yeah, if no one has any concerns, I'll, start to, I'll get to work with the NHDOIT and great. get the URL set up. And Please we'll, do. We'll go live with this probably sometime next week. Oh, exciting. Ooh. Thank you so Thank much, Thank you. Thank you. Looks great. All right. Moving on to the agenda, we are in the report section. The first report is the superintendent report. Meredith, would you like to give us your report? Sure. First, uh, just again, compliments to Chris. Um, he's worked very hard on this project over the last several months, sort of getting the school year up and running first, but then he's, he's been working on this uh, pretty solidly over, over recent weeks, and um, a lot of the content acquisition has been pulling teeth. Um, <laughs> like, uh, the only one um, who has been difficult to get information from, but I appreciate his persistence and um, I, I think he's providing you with a great product moving forward. Um, we have an emergency management drill with the Department of Homeland Security next week, um, and town officials will be joining us for that, so we're looking forward to that. It's a tabletop drill, um, so it's not, it doesn't involve students, it's a practice opportunity for our teams. Um, we are also offering, in conjunction with the University of New Hampshire, some diversity training for staff coming up in the next couple of weeks. We are already working on our summer um, planning, summer school, um, and facilities use positions, as well as some professional development for this coming summer to include comprehensive-based education training in partnership with some other districts in the area. for the weight room, athletic sign um, for the gymnasium, um, but a sign, uh, this is a LED sign 
going to be placed in front of the junior senior high school, similar to the one that is at Cobrown Academy, if people are familiar with that in Northwood. Um, so the board will need to make a decision on um, whether or not it wants to proceed with that. Do we need to ask the DOT for permission? We do not. It is not on the road. It is within the setback allowance. Thank you for asking <laughs> that because we would need to start two years earlier in order to do that. Yeah, but he, he brings up a fair point, though, just aside from DOT about just, just placement of the thing because it is, you know, people are going to be looking at it. Right. I mean, that is a high traffic might, yeah, where area. Yeah, we want to put it relative to where people might be crossing and all that. But, so, something we should consider. Should we move on to tonight? Or? Um, I would be prepared to do that. I'm not sure. I'd like to know a little bit more about it, frankly, like okay. what, what's being proposed, um, where it might be placed, how it might function. Is it remote? Is it, you know, okay. um, you know have, we, have we considered where? that general concept of information and the specs were included mm -hmm. a couple mm -hmm. months ago and the donation was received from the community member but we can bring that back to you if that's okay. And it was helpful for me having been past Go Ground to see what the sign looked like because I didn't ha have a sense of what it looked like and theirs is actually a nice looking sign like it has a nice wooden Yeah, it's LED so it's yeah. computer controlled from wherever it's a web it's probably remote. Is it up on the, Perfect. as you're going east, is it up on the hillside there? Yes. Yep. yep. That's what I thought. Yep. Lots of schools have them. Yeah, it's just it's up on the hill because of the way the, yeah. the landscape is there. Any committee reports from any school board members? Just uh, from SST um, a month or so ago, I commented that we'd be looking at the uh, the charges for special ed students. That is all being rolled into the review of the 20-year agreement that all of the cooperating schools do, and so that will be part of that review when that comes out. And since it's been 20 years, I guess since that was rewritten, it's going to be. A big, a big one when it comes through. And then Monday the seventh, we have the public hearing for the school for the budget committee. No, Monday the fourteenth is the public hearing. Monday the seventh is the budget. The committee budget committee. Right. Meeting Correct. Um, to vote on the school district budget. And what moves forward from there? Say again, what the fourteenth is? The fourteenth is the public hearing, both the school hearing. board public hearing and the school and the budget committee. I actually had those dates wrong. But I didn't too. Hmm. Both at seven? Right. Yes. Any other committee reports? Okay, no, I have it at, at six, but that doesn't mean anything. 
I have the 14th at 7 and the 7th at 6. But I will find out for you, definitely. And let you know. Please let us know. Do you have nothing further on facilities other than what Meredith just mentioned? Okay. Um, Elizabeth, I'm going to ask you to take over the meeting for a moment. I need to go okay. see what's going on. Okay. So we can go over the school board calendar, which we just started. Again, 7 o'clock is the budget public hearing. No. No. It's just the budget hearing. And then the 14th will be the public hearing. Um, final post date for the budget. Is it correct? Okay, thank you. Then we have our normal, we're back down to normal meetings every other 7th in February 21st. What's next? Next building committee meetings on the 15th. Okay. We can start looking at policies. So we did go over, the, we'll go over the first readings of the, all of the administrative Yeah. Did anybody have any questions over the first readings um, of administration? Let's see here. Yes, on uh, DDAA, there was just, I think it may be um, an editing error. There was a, uh, or, um, on page seven, number nine. DDAA. DDAA. Page seven, number nine. Uh, the old English teacher in me says, um, double negatives. dictionary sitting next to me saying, is this legalese or is this, huh, um, and then on the school board agenda, the, there was a comment, a public comment that was a strike, and it looks as if it's, um, an unfinished sentence. Same policy. No, no, a different one, a school board agenda. So yeah. that's the second read? Probably, yeah. yeah. We can come back to that one, yep. One of the questions, Meredith, that came up um, earlier was how these changes were made, and I said whether they were um, school board association changes or committee decision changes. And I said that you know it was sort of a combination of those things. There were times when um, we simply replaced our existing policy with the um, school board association suggestion. There were times when maybe we needed to modify or amend our current policy based upon that, and that's where our decisions came from. Yeah, some of those are a result of legislative changes. We dealt with some of those earlier, but um, not all of those were complete um, when we began our review of policy in September, um, because some of the legislation was still being finalized, yeah, right. or yeah. just been finalized. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's a pretty accurate description. Um, and it's the policy committee's role to recommend those to the board for review. I said, as the newest member uh, of the board, being on this policy review committee has been a tremendous education because it forces me to go through each and every one of them very systematically. And I would highly recommend that we look at making sure that the, the newest person on the board 
has a chance to do that policy process just because it is a way of forcing that review and it's and it's an enormous volume of material. It's a nice way to discipline oneself to read it all. <laughs> I just asked if anybody had any questions. That's where I, when you came back. Okay. Any further questions about the, the first reads of policy? Or Meredith, anything you want to highlight on them? Okay. Um, hearing no questions, we'll move on to the action items of our agenda, if that's okay. The first one is the approval of the minutes. Um, there needs, I seek a motion. I need to make an amendment to the, I believe it was the, uh, December 20th minutes. Um, there is under shared services that I believe I said that the public hearing on the budget will be on January 7th, which should be on the 14th. But I had that in That's my head. Yeah. That's what I, I, have I did here. until just now. So um, I seek a motion to approve <coughs> the meetings, both public and non public, from November 29th. December 6th, December 10th, and December 20th with, a, with a, a, an amendment to the um, December 20th minutes as listed. So, so moved. Second. I have a motion for Ms. Alberg with a second for Ms. McKinney to approve the minutes with the one amendment. Any more amendments that need to be made? Hearing none, we'll move to the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, the manifest. Mike, will you take us? I, think it, yeah, I make a motion to approve the payroll uh, and accounts payable manifest for December 28th and uh, January 4th, uh, 2018 and 19, respectively, and the total amount of $1,539,000. $1,539,900. Second. We have a motion from Mr. Kennison to approve the manifest set listed and second from Ms. McKinney. All those in favor of approval of the manifest say aye. 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 The, next, aye. the next thing we need to address is there's a delegate assembly for the New Hampshire School Board on um, the 26th of January. And um, if possible, I'd like to appoint a delegate to attend that assembly. Um, is there anyone that would be able to do that? Um, it's going to be approximately from 10 to 3. Um, and the um, we're going to look at some of the amendments that are the proposed resolutions that are going to be addressed that day. We would need to approve those or not and select uh, or uh, appoint a delegate to attend the meeting on the 26th. Sorry, January. Saturday. To Saturday from ten to three. Um, anyone? Bueller. Bueller. Can uh, is this where we? Well, since she's not here. <laughs> um, <laughs> no. okay, I don't think that would be fair. Um. I, I, I have basketball. I have I'm coaching on Saturday, so I, I'm out. Um, when do we have to give them an answer? As soon as possible. Sure. Well, you could add this to your agenda on the 17th as an additional item if you don't want to vote on it tonight. But you would have to vote at a meeting to appoint your delegate, and you can only have one other scheduled before that. Right. Was out again today. Yeah. <laughs> so, should we revisit it on the 17th and make a decision at that point? Uh. So, that night for the workshop, we have um, some school board search information to look at, as well as the appointment of the um, delegate for the New Hampshire School Board Association. Yes, we do. And we might want to look at depend. We might want to do a six o'clock yeah. 
um, if, if everyone's available for that that night to get our business taken care of before the presentation at 7. Should we just make that decided? So on the 17th, we'll meet at 6 yep. to do the school, the, to, to appoint the school board association member and go over um, the document for the superintendent search and then we'll have the workshop at 7 at Commerce City Based Education. Now the... To be clear, and tackle the resolutions at that time. Yes, well. we'll tackle the resolutions at that time. And then that's all. So if you have not reviewed the resolutions, please make sure you do those. Do that by that time. We'll do yeah. all that in the next meeting. Um, I seek a motion to seek reimbursement of two hundred and twenty-six thousand. Oh, ah, uh, yes, that would be very important. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I have my glasses on, Lisa. So the last meeting we didn't approve the total numbers, but I was also looking at the transportation and just discussing the superintendent with some of my peers. It was actually the contracted. transportation necessitated by individual education plans right. not to be confused with, with the an additional overall during bus. budget discussion of an additional bus that was elimination required. Yeah. Right. So, so uh, I, um, I didn't follow that. So what, what is this again? So this is, um, we had a question on the um, transportation and when I was looking at it, or I, I think I said that includes all transportation, including special ed, and there was a question on um, couldn't we add the additional expense for that? Like a percentage change. Right, right. So I had to pull a, um, a, small, a portion out, but I could add to that twelve thousand four hundred forty-two dollars, which you'll see under the function twenty-seven hundred, which is student transportation on page three or five. So the total default budget that is proposed is twenty million seven eighty-six one seventy-eight, and that is the number that. And Lisa, do you need us to complete the MSDSV at you this can point? You do that after the public hearing. You can sign all the forms. Um, I, you know, there's always the chance that a member might yeah. choose to okay. adjust. We just make sure that we sign up to have that. Maybe we'll just plan to bring it that evening and we can get that taken care of. Yes, I will have the forms okay. there because the MS form for the budget committee also will need to okay. be signed. So I seek a motion to approve the default budget as listed um, in the amount of twenty million seven hundred eighty-six thousand one hundred seventy-eight dollars. So moved. Second. We have a motion from Miss McKinney with a second from Mr. Kennison to approve the default budget as listed. Any questions about that motion? Hearing none, we'll move to the vote. All those in favor of approving the default budget say aye. Aye. It's approved. Um, the next thing is a motion to seek reimbursement from the town um, for impact fees for school construction project expenses. Um, Meredith, do you, do you want to say anything about that? Sure, and Lisa can chime in. Um, historically, the way that impact fees have been sought in the town have been as a reimbursement. And so we have an invoice for construction work. Um, we would seek reimbursement from the town council for that, but the board needs to vote to seek that reimbursement. Those monies <coughs> then go to offset bond costs. Go to that town bond expenses. I, I seek a motion to seek reimbursement of $226,783.97 of impact fees for school construction project expenses from the Newmarket Town Council. So moved. Second. We have a motion for Mr. Kennison with a second for Ms. McKinney to seek reimbursement of the impact fees. Any questions about that motion? 
Hearing none, we'll move to the vote. All those in favor of seeking reimbursement say aye. 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 The next thing is approval of donations and acceptance. Meredith already accepted the robotics yes. donation, so Perfect. thank you to the orthodontics group for that. And we will keep them updated on the happenings of the robotics team as they ask, I'm sure. And then we have a band donation. I'm not sure where that's from or. Yep. Um, so we received a donation from a gentleman uh, by the name of Tom Sawyer. He lives out of state, actually, but attended our holiday concert and oh, made a donation to our band program of $1,500. That's amazing. I seek a motion to accept the generous donation from Mr. Sawyer of fifteen hundred dollars for the high school band. So moved. Second. We have a motion from Miss Allberg with a second from Mr. Kennison to approve accept the donation. Thank you, Mr. Sawyer, for that. On that, it just came to my mind. If um, I know that we have have had other generous donations, and you know, we talked about the sign earlier. Um, we've acknowledged folks here. Are we are we sending letters? Yes, we are. Okay. Great. Uh, we'll move to the vote of accepting this donation. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you again, Mr. Sawyer. And the concert was excellent. <coughs> the next thing is second readings of some policies. Policies. The policy committee has been diligently working on policy, and Superintendent Nato. Um, any questions about these policies we had first read last time? I had um, the agenda. Yeah, the agenda. Um, the what? I forgot to write that on. DB agenda preparation and dissemination. DB. strike and I read this online so maybe it's been I just said uh, agenda public comment strike leaves an, an unfinished sentence. strike lines in it, so, uh, or, or there were in what I was reading online. Mm -hmm. okay. Matter of it looked like it was a, a, like th there were some there were a couple of places where it at the right end of the page and the or the right side of the page and the left side of the page on the adjoining lines that the slash through had not worked and just made it an un, unfinished sentence. My next one was BGE under. Um,
paragraph three. Uh, all policy manuals to anyone. That's uh, maybe this was wrong. Policy all policy manuals, manuals to, to anyone to are. Out. Yeah, that may be that may be what it was. Continue the strikeout all the way through there. And just all policy manuals are subject to recall at any time. Yeah, and that was it then. Any other policy issues for the second meeting? For the two Elizabeths, um, um, comment earlier about um, changes recommended by the school board association or versus the, what the committee may have come up with. I don't know if it's feasible, but if, if, you, if, if the committee recalls and can point out where we might have deviated and, and what, what the thinking was. Is that is it is it too thorough in these to is too much of it to kind of pick through it or I mean I would say there's been no substances ch substantive change to the public like, there's nothing where we've said no it's been strictly what the recommendations were if we looked at it and we said this is redundant we have their copy our copy and a, mm -hmm. another one the, let's PGE is a good example though the, uh, your, the one we were just looking at around policy dissemination, mm -hmm. um, your policy manual is no longer a hard copy manual that you give out to everyone. Mm -hmm. um, you've maintained it online, so it was updated to reflect that. Okay. Um, the School Board Association's version still shows it as um, the, the, the hard copy, and we do have one paper copy because you would do that as good practice. But that, that's a good example of where the committee said mm, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for us to say that we're going to hand out manuals when we don't provide it online where right. everyone can access it. And part of the discussion at that point was I had just been doing something on the, uh, the Dell, and I realized that I was able to backtrack and find something from several months back. As inexperienced as I am with that search, I was still able to find something. So I said, yeah, it makes sense to me because... I'm probably the least experienced in all of this, and I could still find it now. And I'm, I, not, I'm not really adept, but I could find it. I think it's helpful also to be able to look at strikeouts and things to see, you know, and that basically, you know, Meredith was just saying, no one's going to be in possession. So you can see where the changes were made, and she had articulated why that bold, one was made. The bold additions are things that were added. The legal references sometimes have changed. I, I, I don't think no, I, I, for, for my purposes I don't think that's necessary I just I just it, my, my question was more general it's just that did you see I mean what you just described is an obvious change we don't have a we don't have a we don't hand out paper copies anymore we, we wisely, I got one <laughs> we, we wisely have them on their website on our website um, but just like it was there anything in the, when the committee was reviewing these where you said you looked at the at the uh, proposed version of uh, from the school board administrator and say hey Boy, we really don't think that's what we want to do, or we want to tweak that a little bit. We think we, it's better this way. Any of those types of changes? I mean, like one one example would be the, the superintendent evaluation piece. We there was a policy for it, and then there were examples of evaluations. Mm -hmm. And in our case, maybe we had three, and there were three more from the school boards association. And we sort of looked at those six and determine the best ones to put in that give us, gave us a, a, the most wide-ranging option for evaluation for that candidate, and that's how we came to that. Those are for that, that's the first reading. Yeah, and that's just something that just came to right well, now. That's good, because that's what I was wondering. Yeah. How did you come mm -hmm. to that? Yep. How did you choose that? And it gave us, it, they were the ones that provided us, would provide future boards mm -hmm. with the best ability to evaluate that position, and that's just one example mm -hmm. of what happens. Um, As I know, you know, sometimes just in, in, in my work, like with model rules, and sometimes they, you know, may not fit quite so neatly for our um, district. And, and but there are obviously a lot of just legal stuff that right. that we wouldn't tweak. Um, but I 
so I gather in, in, in the stuff for the second reading tonight, there's there's nothing really of substance that's changed, I suppose, from what was recommended by the, um, the um, model policies from the school board administrators. I mean, there are some that are being struck through as deletions for reasons. Um, Other than just the cleanup, like we talked about. Yeah. I, I, didn't, want, I didn't want to dwell on that. That's, no, that's I mean, that's just, you know, um, and there were some, some situations where we had some redundancies Mm -hmm. where um, you have the policy in two places two places or yeah. even in the same policy we're saying the same thing a couple different ways within a page mm -hmm. and you don't need to have that second iteration right it. so so more cleanup sort of exactly right. exactly but nothing in the substantive category that you can I mean nothing nothing, nothing ju jumps out okay. mm -hmm. um, and Ingrid I might be misspeaking no, but I don't. Not, uh, nothing no because if we were going to make a substance and change, substantive change of policy, that would require the bo overall board, board approval right. and action on it. So we can't, we don't even have that power to say, here's a whole new generated policy based upon Ingrid and Kim deciding, because we don't have that ability. Well, well actually, I, I would, what I was thinking is that I'm not worried about that you would, but that you wouldn't, that you, if you took, if you looked at something, boy, this doesn't really make sense. Like it wasn't a strict legal requirement, but you saw a better way. Um, that, that, that your fresh eyes on it might say, hey, you know, at least bring it to our attention. And I think that's exactly what happened yeah. in the example of the superintendent evaluation. Yeah. We are looking at something that could provide us and future boards mm -hmm. with better ability to, to provide, to do this job, that part of the job. Right. So that's a decision we made to add those things in. Okay. Got it. So. Okay. Any other questions about those? Um, I seek a motion to approve the policies as listed under second reading with the amendment to B E B G E to strike BGE. out um, the, the two the, the notes that Ingrid Miss mm -hmm. Albert right. added tonight. I seek a motion. So moved. Second. I have a motion from Miss McKinney and a second from Miss Alberg to approve the policies listed on, listed under the second read. Um, all those in favor of approval say aye. 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 Just a couple things before we go into non-public session. Um, there's going to be a budget committee meeting next Monday the 7th at 7, we believe, to <laughs> further um, review the school budget. Could be 6. 6 or 7 to be determined. Um, we will need to um, hone in on this, the communication piece to have that part ready to um, share if requested by the budget committee. And then the public hearing for the school budget will be on the 14th at 7. So those are, those are two Mondays in a row. And our next uh, meeting as a board will be the school board workshop. It's on January 17th. We've decided that's going to be at 6 p.m. At 6 p.m. we will review the details <laughs> from, that we discussed in the superintendent search as well as um, appoint a delegate for the New, New Hampshire School Board Association Assembly and review the proposed resolutions there. And then we will have a presentation on um, competency-based education. And I seek a motion to go into non-public session under RSA 91A32C. So moved. Kenny. Kenny Sloan. We'll do a roll call vote at 7.50. Ms. Alberg? Y yes. Mr. Kennison? Aye. Ms. McKinney? Aye. Okay. It is the... Right. Thank you. Thank you Good for night. coming. I will, the one of the policies that reminded me of one of the old days.